Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast, here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, June 15, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We have another narrow ranging day. The market is trying to grind higher. It can't seem to get out of its own way at present. One of the main reasons is we're again waiting on the Fed. We have the same scenario we had yesterday. We have Kabuki Theater teed up for Wednesday afternoon. Leading up to that type of event, that time frame around mid-afternoon when we'll get the FOMC announcement, and then following that, we'll get a press conference by the chair, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell. Once that all takes place, we'll get the market whipping around up and down. It will pick a direction and it will go on from there. But leading up to the event, we get a lot of chop shop formation. However, there's always a however. When we look around the horn, things aren't as mundane as they might appear on the daily chart. So what we're going to do is look at other charts where the chart is actually speaking back something in the chart language to traders willing to look at those charts. Just because the market didn't get very far yesterday or today, it doesn't mean that it's developing some kind of pattern that can be noticed on one of the time frames we typically look at. Do we see anything material on the 240 minute chart? And the answer is no. The market's grinding higher in an uptrend. The trend is your friend until when? Until she dumps you or throws your crap out the second story window. What about the 120 minute chart? Now, to me, that's telling a slightly different story. It's still the trend is your friend, but you can see here that this candle that was from the first 120 minute candle of today's activity made a new high, created a breakdown candle, and now they've begun to make what we'll call a bearish wedge slash bearish flaggish kind of formation inside that breakdown candle. Okay, fair enough. Now we have the uptrend. That is the dominant thing, but, and it just so happens that the high of today's candle happens to be the all-time high, but we can still say because we paint by the numbers, all charts act and react the same way. We've seen this a million times. We know that until and unless they are able to get above and close a two-hour, 120-minute candle above, then this is making a bearish pattern that will play out under normal garden variety conditions in the southern direction. Do we see any kind of confirmation on the 60-minute chart? And the answer is yes. It really tells us the same story first. The dominant thing is the trend. It's still in an uptrend. And by the way, certainly, we all know this, certainly, after the Fed announcement and the press conference, all bets are off. The market's going to go up. The market's going to go down. It's going to do it both a number of times before picking a direction and going. They may make a new high and end up lower by the end of the day or the following day. They may play this pattern out to the downside And then the following day, we could find the market yet again at new highs. So all awarenesses are on the table. Even at that, we still analyze the charts every single day using all the tools in our toolbox because we still need to know the important spots. We still need to know if, in fact, something does play out in the southern direction, where support would be where the lines in the sand are, and these are things that inside the numbers members get each and every day when appropriate, when necessary, when we need them. We also play umpire calling balls and strikes, and we do have to note a couple of important things. One of them is that even when you go down to the shorter time frames, I want you to realize that on no chart are we underneath the moving averages. Therefore, on all time frames, The trend is the dominant thing, and the trend remains up. So what does that potentially tell us? Well, it potentially tells us that, A, in an uptrend, markets are looking for reasons to go higher. So the market will be looking for a reason to interpret whatever the Fed says, does, or doesn't do as positive information 
and send markets to new highs. That doesn't mean it can't go down. It doesn't mean that the Federal Reserve won't say something to spook the market. They certainly can. But all things being equal, when the market's in an uptrend, the path of least resistance is higher, so market participants are looking for reasons for positive information to send prices higher. Folks that are short the market are looking for the opposite effect, but there's way more longs in the market than there are shorts. We're gonna take a look at inside the numbers. We're gonna look through the commentary, but you'll note that today was an abbreviated session. The commentary only goes for about an hour. However, the writing was on the wall that the market really wasn't gonna get very far yesterday and today, therefore, We'll still go through the commentary and we'll still note numbers that were important irregardless of what the market was or wasn't doing. So here we have some early thoughts. What were the early thoughts today? I think there's information here worth noting, so let's go through it real quick. Much of the same story as yesterday, plenty of discussion in and around the Fed. That's obvious. There are two sides to the story. Side A. Can the Fed work its way out of the pickle that it put itself in, a la the inflation conversation and all that stuff? So being the buyer, this is the pickle, being the buyer of whatever it takes, whatever kind of bonds it takes, or whatever they're buying to put on their balance sheet to support asset prices and flood the markets with cash or cash into the system to avoid markets that go down into a correction or worse. That's the pickle. The pickle is, can they unwind the trillions back off their balance sheet? That's what hedge fund managers, mutual fund managers, economists, traders, investors, everybody under the sun is wondering when, in fact, can the Fed unwind and get themselves out of the pickle? Now, they'll tell you they're not in a pickle, so this is me talking, not the Fed talking, not anybody that's a Fed advocate talking, they don't think the Fed's in a pickle. Here comes side B. They're doing a great job. These are the people that are taking side B. And Fed Chair Powell is a greatest Fed chair ever. Now, he may be, that's an opinion, but this is side B. These people will see a positive development in whatever the Fed says or does at any time, anywhere, for any reason. So we have some more Fed talk, and now we'll skip the rest of that. Hopefully you get the gist. You can obviously read it on your own. But I also wanted to put in traders' mind that we had that end-of-the-day jam session yesterday where they shoved the market up a lot of points in a short period of time. Now, if we were seeing follow-through overnight in the futures, a big gap higher this morning, that's one thing that's called follow-through. But basically, they were just hanging around the same spot from yesterday. We would expect the meat of the day to be similar to the meat of yesterday. Light volume, chop shop formation. That's pretty much what we got. What about the morning rush hour? Well, if they come back to check in at or run a test of the most recent breakout area, that would represent support in the zone between SPY 424 and a quarter down to 423.50 which is where the jam session began. Here's the visual. They're opening up in the neighborhood of where they were yesterday, late in the day. And here, they basically sell off for most of the morning, and you see precisely what happened. They come into the zone of 424 and a quarter, and the other end of the zone, the lower end of the zone, was 423.50. They didn't quite get there. Low of day was 423.54. Funny how that works. And here's what I was talking about. Now we're looking at a 15-minute chart, and you can see here the end of the day yesterday was trading around here. Then all of a sudden, late in the day, after 3 o'clock, they start creeping higher, and then after 3.30, they really begin to take off to the upside. So what I was talking about was the fact that this was really that breakout area where the market was in here, and it broke out late in the day. And what did they do today? came back to check in at a former breakout area. These happen on shorter time frames. They also happen on longer time frames. So where exactly is the breakout area to the penny? Well, we never really know because it's a concept. It's not really mathematical on where the breakout area was. 
I try and narrow things down. 423.50 seemed like a logical place. They came up four cents short. So we have to say they came back to check in at the former breakout area from yesterday. Don't you think? All charts act and react the same way. Funny how that works too. Let's move along and see what else we had in the morning session where we were here. There was a late edition on DraftKings. There was some negative news on that, so I picked a number that was a little lower than it got today. We don't have to worry about that. It didn't happen. Let's get to where the day actually does get underway. And here, before the opening bell, 921, here's one of these inside my head thing. So I would pay attention to this, maybe get out a pencil and a sticky note. This is inside my head. What I want you to think about before the opening bell. Is the market going to just run away before the FOMC announcement tomorrow afternoon? While anything's possible, it's not probable, speaking from experience, void of resistance numbers up in no man's land. So this is pure me inside my head, just speaking from experience. Here's the point. Can a trader short the market up in this neighborhood of 425.50, and that's basically where they open the day, up to 426, looking for a pullback. Remember, yesterday they had a jam session out of nowhere, and so far, no follow-through to speak of on the futures. So I'm kind of reading into things, reading between the lines on what may not have happened overnight. Feels like shenanigans. It's not a suggested short the market here. It's trader's choice as long as they understand we could be in a runaway for another few points. My opinion is we're not. We all know what opinions are worth most of the time. You take an opinion for what it's worth. If you assume the risk and they start closing candles above 426, might want to reevaluate the position before you get a real pie in the face. So here was my point. If an aggressive trader wanted to short the market up in that area where they opened the tape, then that was fine and I was giving you my thought process, but we really don't have any resistance in no man's land and that's why I had to pose it the way it was. Here's that five minute chart again for the visual and you can see the high of day was just underneath that, four and a quarter point 46. And then they came down for basically the entire morning session before getting some kind of a rally back up in the afternoon. Let's see what else we have. 940, 424, 50 is the first area where there could be a bounce, logical area. Then it's a spike of 424, and the buy the dip crowd will likely make an appearance. So we know what happened. We saw the chart. We saw the zone. And at 944, they still should work lower, in my humble opinion, but it could take some time. It did take some time. It took a couple of hours. And I'll let you read the notes, the rest of the notes for yourself. There wasn't that much more. They ended at around 1030, 1025. It's not the norm. It's in the 20% of the 80-20 rule in terms of the garden variety 80-20 rule. 20% of the time and much less than that, there's going to be an anomaly where I've got some appointment that I've got to go somewhere. It's not just life of a trader, it's life of everybody. What's going on over in Camp IWM today? And you see they came down to at least make some kind of an attempt at that sloping or downsloping trend line that will, under normal garden variety conditions, be support on the first hit. Now they came somewhat close, they bounced away, so it takes a little bit of that off the table, and then also we have the anything goes scenario with the FOMC tomorrow, but under normal garden variety conditions, the IWM would work its way down to at least run a test of this trend line. Staying above the trend line on daily closes keeps the IWM bullish. Closing a day and multiple days back below that trend line makes the IWM in the bearish camp, but then you have to contend with the moving averages. We'll cross that bridge if and when we get there. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Any change there? While it was an up day today, a nice up day over 100 points, about three quarters of 1%, you see what's going on. They just completed another leg of the bearish flaggish thing underneath the 50 period moving average. So each day they've basically done the same thing. The lows and highs of the last four days are roughly in the same general area. 
if they get a spike upward in the northern direction after the FOMC in a bullish feeling after the announcement where market participants are feeling bullish and want to send prices higher, if they can get this back above that 20-period moving average and also above this break down candle high, start closing hourly above there, daily above there, then all of a sudden you'll turn the trend back up in the northern direction on this daily chart. You can also see on the 240 chart, you're below three out of four moving averages, and the bearish pattern is really just extended on this chart because of the difference in time frames. About a slightly different look on the 120 minute chart. So the same thing applies to the moving averages. However, if you look at this candle here, if they start getting above and closing candles above this high, what are they gonna wanna do? They're gonna wanna run a test of the next breakdown candle high in the sequence. Where is that? Well, it's right here. So they'll wanna go up to this zone here and run a test and a spike through most likely of the 50 period moving average on this chart. So this chart, while also bearish in the same manner the 240 and the daily is, but you can see here that if they were able to just get a little higher, you can really see where a case can be made for a spike up another 100 points. And I don't know whether it would be in rapid fashion or not, but if they're moving higher, they're likely moving higher as a result of Kabuki Theater. And if that's the case, the moves and volatility should expand and get faster and more violent. That's normally the way it works. What about the folks out in Silicon Valley, the Qs? Can we make anything out of the down candle, down two bucks, a little more than half of 1%? And the answer is no, we can't. They made a new high yesterday. There was a pullback. They're well above the moving averages. There's nothing wrong with this chart whatsoever. So therefore, just like in the past, we simply move it along. What about the financials? Now, they've been melting away for several days, so we'll see if there's a big impact following the Fed or not. We have to reserve judgment because this is going to be the most affected, the most sensitive sector to what the Fed does or doesn't do. Interest rates financials, the story we discussed last night. And then you have Smash Mouth, and Smash Mouth is generally speaking a pretty good proxy for the tech space as a whole, but there is a difference on the charts. So Smash Mouth is not making new highs where the Qs are making new highs. So if this was to be a leading indicator of the tech space, then you would expect this to be making new highs and leading the Qs, but it's not the case so we still have to be a little on guard with SMH or Smash Mouth. If they are gonna make a lower high, that's ominous, that's a bearish sign. They already have lower highs, but we know the dominant thing is what? Above all the moving averages. So above those and the thing is dominant, it's pulling price higher, can they make new highs? Of course they can make new highs. They can actually get the spark they need following Kabuki Theater if the thing is gonna be bullish following the thing. And with an abbreviated session for Inside the Numbers and a very mundane market today leading up to or waiting on the Fed, we have somewhat of a shorter video tonight, but so be it. It's everything I wanted to and intended to discuss. But hold on a second. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We are going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.